I'm Judith Thompson, and I'm Harold Feinstein's widow. We were married for 27 years, and uh, they were the best 27 years of my life. I'm so happy to be here at this exhibition, uh, and I'm so grateful to Yasmin and Francois for putting this together. First of all, I was attracted to Harold Feinstein before I ever knew his work, because I am not a photographer. I don't come from the art community, uh, although I have my own kind of artistry, I think. But as I became familiar with Harold's work, what I really appreciated was the, his appreciative eye. He saw things through an eye of really loving this world and loving what he saw. As he often said, I want to show life as it is. And I think he meant common, everyday things. So he would pick up his camera and walk through the streets to see what life was like for people, whether or not he was in New York or in Vermont, which is rural and in the countryside. It's true that he had a kind of social commentary or political sensibility, but he wasn't, uh, he didn't go about his shooting thinking about that so much. It wasn't like, I'm going to take this photograph because it says something related to a social condition, as much as it was, this draws me in and I have some kind of relatedness empathically to this that I'm seeing. So it was, it was more um, natural in the sense of living life every day. He was a very be here now person, but it didn't dictate his photographic uh, approach to things. Now, the photographer doesn't work with sound or words, oftentimes. For most of the, for most of the time, the photographers weren't even working with color. So it was in that limited range between brilliant white down to the blackest black and every tone within that all that could be said in a print had to be contained. So those are precious notes. But even when we get the color, the same, the same applies. Even though we have different colors as well as values. So Harold chose black and white when he began shooting because he was a photographer from mid-century New York. Uh, so in a sense, he was operating in the genre of a mid-century street photographer. And black and white was pretty much the, the modality of the time. He also used to say that he felt that a beautiful, well-produced black and white photograph contained all the colors within it. So this was a sensibility that he had, that actually by looking at a beautiful black and white print, you got uh, a broader spectrum of what was actually visible in that photograph, in that scene at that time. But as photography evolved and color began to be um, more available and accessible, he began to shoot in color in about 1980. And some of the things that you see here are from that era of his color work. And of course, later in his life, he had a whole second chapter uh, of the flowers and other still life that were all in color. Harold used to say this, I came here to do two things in life, to be an artist and to be a teacher. Teaching was never a burden for Harold. Teaching was as natural for him as picking up the camera. He loved teaching. He was passionate about teaching. He was known in the photographic community, uh, even before he started teaching, actually, as a child prodigy. I mean, remember, he picked up the camera at the age of 15. And so traditional schooling didn't, didn't do it for him. It was like he was out of there because he knew who he was. He had absolute and complete confidence. He used to say, I see that creative spark, and I just want to, I just want to blow on that until it burst into flames. He, he loved nothing more than empowering other people. He just loved it. It gave him delight and joy. Harold and I met in 1984. Five or six, I think, at a, at a party. It was very kind of nothing too exciting about how we met. We met at a party of a mutual friend. 
Um, and at the time, I was with someone else, and he was with someone else, and we had a lovely conversation. But uh, he always liked to tell the story that, you know, at that moment, he knew I was the one he wanted to be with. This was Harold's mythology at the time. Uh, he was a very warm-hearted, loving, very patient man himself, very understanding, very mature in his understanding of freedom and what constituted freedom for individuals, for himself and myself. So there was a great deal of freedom that we both had, but it wasn't kind of that we were unattached to each other. It was simply that uh, we felt secure enough in the relationship we had that we could go about our daily lives. My work was very different. I traveled internationally a great deal. He was, you know, in, in his dark room, or there'd be times when we wouldn't see each other for a long period of time, there was very little neediness that we had. Um, or I would maybe say it this way, we gave each other certain things that we each needed and wanted. He was 20 years older than me, and it became very clear as we aged that uh, his health was going downhill, and it was really time to get serious about the legacy of Harold and how to consolidate that and carry it on. So we began the trust, and it really was after he died in 2015 that I stepped in to be director of the Harold Feinstein Photography Trust. I think the maybe biggest um, sense of responsibility it grows more from my love of Harold than uh, if I were someone who got hired in to do this. Uh, because I knew the man, uh, I believe, not only believe in the work, I love the work, and I want not only photographers and artists, but other people in the future generations to be able to benefit from not only what he saw and produced as an artist, but the things that he said and the things that he understood about life and empowerment and freedom. You know, my dream is that um, Harold really receives the kind of visibility that he deserves, and I, I don't say that as some victim sense of it, because he's gotten a great deal of visibility, but there's more to come. And uh, this show is a big part of that, and that's one of the reasons I'm so grateful for it.